Okay, hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to our OpenShift Commons virtual meetings. I'm Valentina Rodriguez. I'm a principal technical marketing manager, but I also uh, here Red Hat, uh, but also I'm part of the team that is organizing Commons uh, this year. So Commons, our OpenShift Commons event is a KubeCon co-located event. It will be hosted on November 12th. And, and yeah, um, what else I wanted to say? Yes, and it's in Salt Lake City, which is very important. Um, so here with me today, I have um, the amazing, amazing speakers who will be joining us during the event day. So I have Andrew Block, who is a distinguished architect. You probably know him already. I have Brenda McLaren. She's a senior specialist solutions architect on data services. Matt Carleton, he's the manager and he of user uh, the user experience design team. And he's here introducing and representing the team and what they will be doing. Uh, I have Michael as well, Sanjay. Uh, he's the ecosystem technical uh, strategist. Uh, so Michael is the is the co-lead for the validated patterns special interest group. Andrew Block is the lead for the security special interest group. Brenda also will be talking about uh, a session which which is part of it in our commons event uh we have jamie magiera who is a senior system in engineer uh csx who will is representing the okd team uh he is part of a roundtable discussion we will be having uh hosted at commons we have also simon seagrave who is a senior principal product marketing manager and he is amazing i've been working with him all of you are amazing but I've been working with him for so long, and he will be the master of ceremonies at Commons. Uh, I also have Surya Siderman. Uh, she's a principal software engineer, and she will be in our. She will be leading one of the roundtable discussions around networking, and also doing uh, one of the uh, art of the possible demos. So. So yeah, with that, um, thank you all for joining today. I want to talk about little about the event, also the OpenShift Commons Salt Lake City. This is a very special event for all of us. For me, for all of us, uh, for everyone at Red Hat, uh, it's, it's a special because it's where we have the opportunity to connect with, with customers, with partners, uh, everyone there that uh, works with OpenShift in certain way or uses OpenShift. And this is a special event. It's one of my favorites, actually, where we all have the opportunity to share knowledge, uh, connect, network, learn from each other. Uh, so that is what really makes it special. But what makes it more special is, of course, you that you are watching. And so we want to invite you to, of course, to register to the event on the website, on the Commons website. Um, if you haven't done it yet. But also, in order to celebrate you and the end user community, we are doing a special award this year. I will start sharing my screen. One second. Okay. So we want to celebrate our community of end users and contributions. So here we have a link to a form. So we are inviting you to, to really submit nominations. So whatever it is that you've been doing in your company, maybe you are building the next evolution of OpenShift within your company, or you are advocating, attending many events, or just you know removing barriers within your organization, or just talking with, with people, doing knowledge sharing, whatever is the form that you are taking within our community, we want to celebrate you. So please uh, submit your nomination or submit someone that you know is really uh, contributing and you know embracing, embracing this technology and the solutions and the community as a whole. So, so with that, we'll stop sharing. And um, now, um, Today, what I, I also want to cover is a little of what to expect that day. And Simon here will help me also with that. And all the speakers will be talking about their sessions. So what to expect that day, we will have a um, full day of sessions. So we have a main track. Um, and then we also have breakout rooms where we 
we focus on collaboration and networking and we will be talking on that in one second but with that i want to yeah i want to hand it over to simon to walk us through over the the main track and what to expect and and simon i know this is an special opportunity for you as well i would love to hear about why it's special for you yeah thanks valentina and hi everyone how are you doing so um yeah, I just really wanted to build on some of the, uh, you know, some of the topics that uh, Valentina mentioned there. And, uh, you know, firstly, I feel very privileged to have been asked to MC this event. Um, I've been part of various um, uh, communities over my career, and I'll, I'll touch on that very shortly. But again, um, just as a quick refresher there as to, you know, common, uh, commons where it is. Uh, if you're attending QCon, no reason not to show up there. It's on the Tuesday. And it's free, so no barrier to entry there at all. So if you're uh, if you're attending, come along. We'd love to see you there. So I'm just going to spend the next few minutes just running through a little bit about about myself because you know uh, many of you I've uh, met for the first time recently, or perhaps haven't met before now. So just to provide a little bit of context as to you know who is this guy that's going to be on stage in front of you there, taking you through the day uh, in November. So I'll just spend a few minutes just giving you a little bit of background about myself as we go through. Um, so yeah, as Valentina mentioned, my name is Simon Seagrave. I am a Senior Principal Product Marketing Manager, which is quite a mouthful. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a complete tech enthusiast or geek. Um, you know, I love tech. I've been in the tech industry for over 25 years, um, particularly in the uh, the cloud compute and virtualization space. So I've been in the space for the for the longest of times. Um, as you can tell, I have a slightly funny accent. Um, I'm from New Zealand originally, via the UK for 15 years, just long enough to get married. Um, to my wonderful wonderful wife Sarah, and we have one son who's eleven. Um, so I uh, spent the last seven years over in Massachusetts. So as you can hear, my accent at this point is a complete mismatch, uh, mix match of various various accents. So, um, like I mentioned, you know, been in the space for for ages. Um, I started off as a programmer. Uh, not many people know that actually. Twenty five years ago, uh, and I was part of a small three person team that actually coded up the first ever. Uh, fully automated OCR sensor system in the world. Um, New Zealand's little country at that point was used as a test bed. So I started as a programmer, but um, yeah, uh, very shortly after uh, after that, uh, circumstances had me get more onto the infrastructure side. So over the years, you know, I've been everything from a server administrator, um, you know, administering uh, servers and the systems of um, uh, uh, um, Windows-based systems on oil rigs in the North Sea, right through to uh, finance through to oil and gas, as I mentioned. Being a technical architect as well, uh, I, I had the privilege of architecting one of the first ever video on demand platforms in the UK. Uh, so that was particularly exciting. And then 10 years ago, I, I shifted to the dark side to marketing, uh, technical marketing, which was a foot on both camps. I see Andrew shaking his head there, but uh, I still like to keep my hand in with things technology. Uh, wise and uh, you know in, in the last sort of seven eight years I've become a product marketing manager with this uh, around that so um, during this time I've been heavily involved with communities um, uh, you know around the various uh, technology stacks I've been involved with so uh, you know the VMware community for example Kubernetes community some of the hardware uh, vendors as well so for me personally I like I say I felt very privileged to be able to um, uh, MC this event in this uh, you know in the upcoming uh, event coming up soon. Um, but you know, what is a community? Valentina, um, you know, touched on it there. Um, my predecessor who emceed, uh, who no doubt you're very familiar with, the, the wonderful uh, Karina Angel, she uh, emceed a number of these events. And I think she summarized it very well, actually, you know, better together, you know, what is community? It's about bringing together the end users, the partners, the upstream community uh, contributors, sorry, um, you know, to make the ecosystem uh, stronger for everyone. I, 100% agree with that. And for me as well, um, you know, it's about networking. What I've got out of community over the years has been making friends, really, you know, co connecting with my peers from various diverse backgrounds, countries, um, companies as well, and really getting together in, you know, social settings at these events, you know, almost becomes like extended family. It's great. You know, quite often a lot of these folks you don't see for a year or a couple of years and you see them again and it's like long lost relatives that you haven't seen. And, you know, you catch up, compare war stories about what you've been working on and what have you which you know it's about knowledge sharing as well you know what's been working for you you know in this context it's about open shifts and the red hat eco 
ecosystem. Um, you know, it's great to share, like I say, those those stories about, you know, what you've experienced, what's worked, what hasn't, spark ideas, you know, create interest around um, around the product itself, which, you know, ultimately helps contribute in. And the wonderful thing, I've been red, with Red Hat for four years. The great thing with Red Hat, obviously, is very open. It's based on open source, and the culture within the company is very open as well. So it's about that two-way dialogue between ourselves and and our, our community out there as well, because you know you all help contribute and make it a better product as well. And uh, you know, um, events like this are very much about listening to you about what you'd like to see, features, functions, what's working, what isn't. You know, get that two-way dialogue going, and uh, we'll see that in the agenda that we have lined up that I'll uh, uh, cover shortly. So moving things along, um, so we have breakout sessions at the event that Valentina mentioned there, but also we have an agenda on the main stage as well. And this is where I'll be spending my day to introduce the various sections and at the start and end of the day as well. So I just want to give you an insight into what the day will look like. So things kick off at uh, eight o'clock uh, in the morning there. Uh, registration, networking and coffee. Again, it's about community. Great time to turn up, you know, uh, and, and meet with your peers, maybe you know, um, familiar faces, people that you know, but opportunity to network and meet uh, uh, new folks as well that will be at the event for the day. We'll be kicking off the keynote at uh, 9 a.m. That'll run for 45 minutes. We've got um, a couple of senior members of the Red Hat uh, team, uh, Mike Barrett, who heads up the um, uh, hybrid platforms uh, business unit will be one of the speakers there. And then from there, we go straight into the topic of AI. So as many of you are no doubt, uh, you know, uh, involved with at the moment, you know, two of the big topics out there, are particularly uh, in the space, is around AI. Companies are trying to figure out how do we integrate AI, generative AI, into our applications and everyday workflows. So we've got some great sessions lined up that for you there. Virtualization is another hot topic at the moment. Um, so we've got some great sessions there. Importantly, we've got some fantastic sessions and breakout sessions around uh, app dev as well. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, 10:15, uh, 10:45. We've got um, virtualization, and throughout the day, it's not going to be um, just Red Hat folks up on stage talking about you know the products, what we're doing. We've made sure that um, you know we want to pull through those customer stories. We want you to hear directly from uh, your peers out there in the industry that have been using our products, um, you know, in the context of AI, app dev, and delivery, virtualization, um, and the like. Um, so you know, great opportunity to hear from them. We have regular coffee breaks throughout the day as well on the, um, on, on the main stage there. Um, and um, yeah, at lunch uh, at around sort of midday-ish from there, we've got some great customer sessions. And um, we've got a couple of sponsors as well. You'll hear from a couple of our, our friends from within the uh, partner ecosystem, a couple of very quick sessions there. And then we've got a fantastic session lined up around fine tuning large language models with Instruct Lab and OpenAI, obviously very topical. Um, we've got a really good panel at 4 to 4.30 around Ask Me Anything. We're going to have some of our experts up on stage. Fantastic opportunity to connect with them, ask them those awkward questions that you want to ask and uh, you know get a very open and frank uh, uh, two-way dialogue going with yourselves and the audience there. And then finishing up the day, um, you know, what's next for, you, next for the OpenShift Commons? This is where um, we will give you insight into, you know, what it's going to look like going forward, the various events, and importantly, as Valentina touched on there, the community awards as well. It's our opportunity to acknowledge, um, uh, you know, those of you in the, in the community there that have been um, you know, contributing particularly in those areas. And last but not least, again, fantastic networking opportunity, all about community, at the reception between five and six. So there's a quick overview, a uh, little bit about myself as well. Um, I look forward to connecting with you all at the event uh, in November. And at this point, I'll hand back to Valentina. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. This is great. I can't wait to be there with, you know, uh, with all of you. Um, so besides the main track, we also have the two breakout rooms, which are really designed to connect and collaborate and interact. We really want to, to see you there. And you do have the opportunity to connect with other customers, partners, Red Hat experts. And for that, we have designed different type of sessions for lightning talks. We have the special interest group sessions. Uh, we also have um, 
roundtable discussions, which I will be talking about in a little, and also a couple of demos. So with that, I want to talk, I want to hand it over to Andrew Block, who is, uh, yeah, who can talk about the special interest group in security. So what we can expect, Andrew, from that session. Thanks, Valentina. Uh, really, it's all about the community. And we, ex we ex you know, went through this during the last two OpenShift Commons, one in EMEA last year, in uh, KubeCon, or, or I had Summit earlier this year. We had a lot of fun because we asked and got the inter interaction from the community. That's really where the difference comes is. We're not just gonna present to you. You're gonna do this in the presentations in the morning. It'll be great. However, the afternoon, the breakouts, the SIGs, the SIGs are about the special interest groups around a particular area, whether it be security, whether it be validated patterns, what, you know, the, everyone here on the team here is gonna talk about everything that they they're gonna talk about at OpenShift Commons. And for security, we're gonna be focusing on the direction, the future of the security SIG. Security is a broad topic, and we wanna hear about what the community is really interested in. The last two OpenShift Commons, we went to, we brought everyone together and heard from them about what they're interested about, what their concerns are, what they wanna talk about. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and use this OpenShift Commons security SIG discussion to learn and talk about what direction the SIG is going to take over the next six months. So if you're interested in security and want to contribute, please come over to the security SIG at OpenShift Commons Gathering. We're going to come together and talk about what we want to do over the next six months. Looking forward to you there. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I attended one of your sessions last time. It was amazing, so highly recommend it. Uh, with that, uh, Michael, do you want us to walk us through about the validated patterns SIG and also the data SIG? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. I've got a few, um, a few slides just uh, reiterating what we're doing there. So I'm really excited to be there and, and uh, leading a couple of the special interest group breakout sessions. Uh, these are going to be in the afternoon. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the data SIG breakout. Uh, and you can find more information in the abstract by following that link there. But I'm going to be joined on stage uh, with uh, Ryan Walner, and I say on stage, not on stage, but we have a breakout room, uh, holds about 50 people. So uh, I know that uh, a number of the folks who have already told me that they intend to uh, come to this session are really excited about di discussing different things uh, different topics in the in the data arena. So, uh, Ryan, I'm really I'm really excited to have him there. Uh, he previously was at Dell uh, Dell Technologies. He's over at Pure Storage uh, right now, working uh, on Portworks, uh, and he is an ambassador for the data on Kubernetes uh, breakout as well. So, you know, he has a lot of experience working with folks. Uh, in the community around things that are data related. Now, as you might uh, guess, he's probably a little bit more focused on the storage, backup and recovery side. We's, we'll also be talking a little bit about uh, data services. We'll try to bring in a few demos to show uh, as part of, uh, of our session as well. But it's really about connecting and having conversations with people. So. The idea behind this is to talk about whatever's on your mind and have a guided conversation around everything from storage and business continuity, disaster recovery, to data security, uh, databases, and, and not just traditional uh, OLTP databases, but also new things like vector, vector DBs, graph DBs, warehouses, data lakes. Uh, it's really open for discussion about anything that is data specific. And then uh, we also, in the afternoon, have a validated pattern SIG breakout. Now, validated patterns is a, a great place for us to discuss different things that are architecture-related or distributed uh, reference architecture-type related uh, uh, deployments, right? And so I'm going to be joined on stage by uh, Matt Bader, who is a principal with Veeam. Uh, and we're not really going to talk about the validated pattern that he's created with um, with backup and recovery. We may have a, a few demos that we show as part of that, 
But really, the idea about this once again is to have uh, a a one uh, a, a a really community-based discussion about what have been your experiences going from reference architectures. Maybe you've you've dealt with uh, blueprints, or maybe you've delved into codifying some uh, some of these architectures or validated uh, validated designs uh, from different uh, different companies. How have you been using those? And what things work? What things don't work? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, use cases, customer use cases that we built into patterns. And, you know, it's going to be an interactive discussion. We want to hear uh, about uh, what, what you like, what you don't like. Maybe there's uh, some other use cases that you'd like to see brought forth. Uh, but overall, I, I love that Matt's going to be joining us on stage here because he has this experience from going from writing reference architectures, developing blueprints, and now working on uh, the GitOps framework uh, around validated patterns. So he has a lot of experience across this entire journey, and that's what we want to talk about uh, in that session. Uh, you can find out a little bit more uh, information here. We will look, be at uh, Le Meridien in Salt Lake. We're going to be in the Pierce Arrow Room. Uh, the data SIG breakout is at 1 p.m. These are 90-minute sessions, so you know, come prepared for 90, a good 90-minute uh, interactive discussion. Uh, the validated patterns breakout starts at 3 o'clock right after that. Really look forward to you joining us. And also, join the SIG. So uh, if you follow these, um, these uh, URLs here, it'll bring you to uh, specifically the, the agenda for the breakout, but it's part of the overall SIG uh, agenda. Please join us on the Slack channel, join us in the virtual events, uh, and you know, let's bring together the community around data and validated patterns. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I also highly recommend that, of course, uh, the sessions, the validated patterns, uh, SIG also meets bi-weekly. Uh, they've been, yeah, existed for a while already. They have amazing sessions. The data SIG uh, is an, a new SIG that actually has born from the storage. We have a conversation with Michael some months ago, uh, and he started thinking about how we can bring the storage SIG into something that is more actual, which is more, you know, holistic approach into data. Like, you know, it can touch from AI, from applications. So, so Michael, I know your session will be amazing as well. So thank you so much. The, the third uh, special interest group is the platform engineering, which will be focusing also um, building this working group from the start and we want to hear your thoughts and your experience with platform engineering but also the session will be focused on bringing the product closer to the end user and for that we will have uh, our product owners there product managers from the Red Hat um, ACS and ACM, uh, Advanced Cluster Security, Advanced Cluster Management, and also the Red Hat Developer Hub, because we believe that also platform engineering starts with the platform and best practices and scalability and security, but also considering the end users like developers, right? So we need to think about developer experience and provide that self-service approach. So the idea is like you, we want you to be part of this process on those products. So so by providing feedback on features, roadmap, challenges that you may have, but also hear from uh, the product managers about what they are working on, what are the new features. So it will be a very interesting 90 minute session. We will have some demos on the products, but really that discussions on bringing the future of platform engineering. And with that, Matt, I want to hear from you. You are representing the UX team who will be with us in many sessions of this, of this and also in roundtable discussions. So can you tell us more about it? What to expect? And I know you've been, your team has been part of many OpenShift Commons in the past. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Valentina. So I'm Matt Carlton, um, one of the managers in the user experience group at Red Hat. So we have a team of designers, researchers, developers in our group of about 130 um, people. Our focus with our designers and 
uh, encouraging and pushing our designers to get it as close to the customer as possible. And so these types of events are exactly where we want to be. We want it exactly like what Michael and Andrew were saying about these sessions, like the opportunity to hear from the community, hear from customers, like where, um, what are the underserved opportunities that the UX group can focus on? We don't, uh, we strive to understand the problems that customers are having so we can deliver solutions working with the with the BU and the engineering group. And we have that strong uh, product trio that we work with typically with, with these different product teams like ACM or ACS, these different groups that we are we are working really closely with to define and understand what where our focus should be. And um, I think a lot of times the UX team gets conflated or confused with the UI, a UI team, which is like a front end UI development team. Whereas the UX team, we actually like to define ourselves as solely focused on the user experience. It doesn't matter if it's the UI or if it's the CLI or if it's like a, helping them better understand like GitOps flows or whatever it is that that customer needs or where we see the need in that product space, that's where we want to focus as, as experienced designers. So it doesn't always mean that we're going to be creating uh, wireframes or, you know, UI mockups or, or, you know, GUIs that a lot of people I think expect from our group. A lot of our work is done in the research phase. A lot of our work is done in the discovery phase of really understanding the customers and the problems that they have. And so these types of events are where we want to be. They're where we get engaged with customers and internal Red Hat people to like connect and understand like where those opportunities are. And it helps push us in the right direction because our group isn't inherently technical. We're not engineers, um, but we do want to understand the problems of the customer. So it's like that fine balance of trying to figure out how do we ensure that we can we can understand the problems that need to be solved by still not being the ones that necessarily write the code or build the applications that solve those problems. But we do work with the the engineering teams to to deliver those those iterative kind of solutions over time. So that's kind of where we're at I, in terms of our our presence at, at Commons, like Valentina had said, we've been present at many of these. Um, we've worked with Andrew and a few other folks on the call here previously in, in different uh, sessions. And it's always a great opportunity, a great experience for our team to connect and support the leads in those spaces and look for opportunity to help engage with the customers. And so if we're there, we're going to be asking questions. We're going to be like following up with different people even after the sessions to better understand maybe some questions or comments that they had made. One of the, the main things that we take away from these types of events is the opportunity to build uh, longer lasting relationships with both customers, uh, community members, and like Red Hatters, internal Red Hatters too, because those are the things that like help us deeply understand what where these products need to go and how we can help support that. So it's it's more, it's not just about that one day for us. It's about you know the months after where we we continue to connect with the different people that we meet. So I won't personally be there, but people on my team will be there, and they're super excited to to join and um, connect with you all. So we're yeah we're very excited to to attend. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, for sure, we are looking forward to connecting with you as well. And Surya, uh, yeah, what can you tell us about the roundtables and the demo as well, which is not actually a demo. It's as a demo, but it's not a demo. So we wanted to make it very interesting and interactive. And the idea is to do, uh, we frame it as the art of the possible. We really want you to get inspired and see new things that you haven't saw before or haven't thought. So Surya, it's an expert here. Um, yeah, what can you tell us about your sessions? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Valentina. I'm Surya Sitaraman, a, a software engineer working on the OpenShift networking team at Red Hat. I'm also part of the Kubernetes SIG network community upstream. I'm really looking forward to attending the OpenShift Commons at Salt Lake this year. I will be doing a 20 minutes art of uh, living kind of demo like that Valentina mentioned, right? Like so it's going to be on this really new and cool feature, which is called user-defined networking 
also known as UDN. Uh, it's, it's an upcoming feature in the next OpenShift release. And let me shed some light into what this demo is all about, right? So traditionally in Kubernetes networking paradigm, it's always been about the fact that all pods can talk to all pods in your cluster, right? So you typically have a cluster, you create an overlay L3 network, and all pods are connected to the same network. But this new feature, user-defined networks, as the name suggests, will basically let the end users create primary networks of different types, right? And you can use this in a way to isolate your workloads from each other. So you can have workloads of type A as part of network A and workloads of type B as part of network B. So you're going to have multiple networks in OpenShift, which is pretty cool. And you can use networks as a way to group workloads together and isolate them in a very native manner. Another advantage of UDN is being able to do seamless virtual machine live migration on layer two types networks on OpenShift, right? So uh, we're going to do a lot of this. And I know it's 20 minutes, but we're going to make it interactive with the audience. It's going to be in a small and cozy setting. So come join us at OpenShift Commons and you know get to know about how all of this integrates with OpenShift virtualization, right? So I'm really looking forward to that one. And so whether you're an end user of OpenShift or a cluster network operator, it's going to really benefit you this session. So looking forward to seeing you there. And like Valentina mentioned, in addition to doing a demo, I'm also going to be a part of the roundtable breakout session. And I will be, as you guessed, at the OpenShift networking table, along with um, a colleague of mine, Doug Smith. So we are both going to be talking about anything networking, so upstream, SIG network developments, CNI 2.0, What's latest in OpenShift networking or OVN Kubernetes, Multis, anything and you know everything networking. I'm also looking forward to this session, especially because it's going to be a roundtable with, say, 10 people. And I get the opportunity to talk to users, customers, partners. And it's not about just me sharing what's new in networking. More than that, I'm really looking forward to listening to the pain points of our end users with everything that they're doing with OpenShift networking, right? And also hear about what they want from OpenShift, right? So um, this is going to be a really free-flowing conversation at a table. So if you are going to be at OpenShift Commons, don't forget to stop by our table. Bring your questions, experiences, use cases, hot takes, and everything regarding OpenShift networking, right? So back to you, Valentina. Love it. Thank you so much. Uh, this was great. Uh, then I will, yeah, Jamie, I would love to hear about your table that you will be representing the OKD team. You know, it's still there. Perfect, I can see you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so talking a little bit about OKD, we'll be talking about, um, for, and for folks that aren't familiar, actually, I should back up a little bit. So OKD is the uh, community-driven Kubernetes distribution that is, um, where it's uh, upstream, sidestream of OpenShift OCP. And so we've had a lot of changes in the past couple of years since we made an announcement at KubeCon um, 2022 in Detroit about switching uh, the op underlying operating system to uh, CentOS Stream CoreOS, a, a CoreOS version of CentOS Stream. So we will be um, having a discussion about sort of the changes that are coming because of that and some of the ways in which the transition and in infrastructure uh, for building OKD and the um, changing of hands, as it were, means that there's going to be more opportunities for community involvement. And I think this is really relevant for folks in um, you know, the OpenShift Commons world to to see that um, OKD is going to be now um, more, uh, I think, accessible for people to contribute and to use it, and we're going to have more testing for it. So it'll be sort of uh, an overview of the changes and then answering questions and working with people on seeing how OKD can be integrated into uh, their work. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So uh, with that, I want to yeah do, uh, I, I need to talk with Brenda, of course. I want to hear all about the session, Brenda. Um, so I want to do a, a summary as well. So the, the SIG, the Special Interest Group, is a great opportunity for you to contribute to specific topics from security to validate the patterns of data. Uh, it's a 90-minute session when you can interact and really learn 
try because we want you to leave the day with knowledge and you know value uh, from the session. So it's a great opportunity for you to contribute also to many of the stories that the teams are working on and solutions. Um, the other thing we talk about the uh, demos, which are like the, this art of the possible, right? With that, we also we have, uh, sorry, I was talking about networking, but we also will have in two more, one on GitOps, of course, GitOps is a very important topic, and also on AI. And this uh, specific demo will be uh, just um, going through like how to start with AI from the development perspective. So it really it will be a really nice demo for those who are looking into how developers can work with AI and how to get started. But also we are doing lightning talks that are uh, focus on applications like EVBF, open telemetry, very interesting topics because OpenShift is also all about ecosystem. So um, with that, um, talking on the round table. So the round tables will be two hour sessions. It's, it will be on a very informal, amazing setting, which will have a lot of lunch, uh, chairs, really beautiful space for you to connect. And what are the, what are the roundtable discussions? It's an opportunity to ask questions, to connect, to network, to learn about many product owners will be there, uh, technical marketing managers, people, software engineers. There is a diverse developer advocates, diverse group of people who will be there, other customers, partners who you can connect, but also help resolve many problems. So with that, we will have in around 12 tables, which around half will be free. So if you have a topic in mind, you just want to bring your own topic, you can do that. If you want to join an existing table, you can do that as well. We have many topics from developer experience, platform as a product, cloud services, virtualizations, GitOps, uh, AI, and many others. So uh, with that, um, please review the schedule. Uh, it's already published. And I want to go back and you know, talk about what the, this event is about. It's really about bringing value to, to you, the end user and the community as a whole with these uh, main track sessions where the, our customers and partners are, will be sharing their stories and their journey for you to learn, get inspired, but also the opportunity to connect. So it's a really unique opportunity. And with that, Brenda, I want us to walk us through your session, which will be on the main track. What can you tell us about it? Hey, thank you, Valentina. Um, so first of all, I'm going to say that I'm like really excited to go to OpenShift Commons. Um, number one, I've never been to Salt Lake City. Uh, so that's going to be exciting for me. But then also this is going to be the first time that I'm going to be a panelist. So that's pretty exciting as well. Um, this is going to be a topic on uh, or a discussion or a panelist discussion on uh, backup and disaster recovery for, um, for Kubernetes. Uh, workloads, both containers and uh, virtual machines. Uh, great panel. Uh, it's going to be moderated by uh, Chris Yanisevsky. He's uh, our senior principal spe uh, specialist solution architect uh, for the North Americas. There is going to be Rodolfo Casas. From, uh, he's a senior solutions architect from Trilio. Uh, we have another partner, Andy Gower. He is head of partner and solutions marketing for Pure Storage and Matt Slotten, who is a principal solutions architect for Veeam. So it's uh, it's it's going to be a panel that, you know, like has a, has a lot of knowledge um, on this uh, on this topic. So if you kind of like think uh, Kubernetes is long, no longer ephemeral, right? There, it's not just running that stateless workload. It's running uh, more uh, more of the state full workloads, uh, databases and virtual machines. And with that comes uh, the requirement that you have to have a backup and a disaster recovery um, that becomes critical uh, for these workloads. So knowing the changes and the caveats of running uh, virtual machines and containers in the OpenShift uh, is, is critical for a successful uh, implementation of that. Uh, we also are gonna kind of like talk a little bit about um, hybrid environments you know, how can you protect the, the data, um, whether you're on-prem, you're on the edge, you're in the cloud, um, you wanna make it, you don't want different solutions. You want like a, a, a you know, like a consistent solution across the board. Um, you all, we also like look at uh, taking uh, and using the cloud providers as, as recovery sites. 
Uh, we'll touch on a little bit about compliance and security. And of course, we'll leave a little bit of time for some Q&A. So come join us at OpenShift Commons for a great discussion. And I look forward to meeting some of you there. Thank you so much. Before Andrea Block, uh, why would you recommend Commons? Oh, why would I recommend it? Um, I think it's a, a, was that for me or somebody else? You both can, I think Andrea needs to drop, so maybe Andrew, Brenda, oh, go, first. Oh. go first, Brenda, because you already had the, had the mic, so go forward first. Oh, okay. sorry about that. Okay, uh, so I'm excited about it, um, I, like I said, um, because of the, uh, the first time, but, I'm all, but I also think like a really great reason to go is to be able to connect with, um, you know, like with Red Hatters, with our partners, um, but probably the most important to me is the contributors to the upstream projects. And I, so I think that's pretty exciting. That's great. Thank you, Andrew. Yes. For me, it's connecting with the community. Um, in many ways, you try to work in terms of you're in a box and you kind of design this perfect solution. You never know if it's going to fly, especially in the security space. You think that the, your little box is nice and secure. Then someone goes ahead, brings the chisel and goes, not quite secure. That's where we learn from the community about what does work, what doesn't work, and what will scale. And we understand only what will scale based on their use cases and their experiences. So we want to have the community to not only talk about security, but talk about everything from you know data and recovery, networking, validated patterns, everything. If we can get everyone involved who are interested in particular areas, share their insights and share with the community, we can build a better community. Yes, great. Who wants to go next, Matt? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think I touched on it when I talked before, but I mean, we're we're definitely uh, enthusiastic about customer engagement and community, like meeting the, the the users who are who are you know passionate about these these efforts and these these products that Red Hat has. We also really benefit from the internal connections too. So you know, kind of, I don't know, we we love meeting other Red Hatters, making those connections that are outside of our group because they ultimately help us connect more customers and get more engaged with uh, with the community. So we we always really enjoy every angle of it. I guess there's not not much about it that we don't love. Great, Mike, Michael. Yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, I've been going to OpenShift Commons for several years now probably since I uh, since I joined Red Hat about seven years ago. And, you know, it's like I go in, I see presentations constantly. I see demos that, that are really, really cool, interactive demos, even hands-on labs and things like that. But it's all very product-centric or it's all, always very mm, centric to a, a, particular, uh, a particular solution maybe that we're building with folks. The difference with OpenShift Commons is really that interaction. So, you know, that's really what I love about bringing the community together because we have the ability to exchange ideas, you know, and, and really get down into, you know, no holes barred. You just start to talk about, hey, this works, this doesn't work. I ran into this problem with such and such a solution that you just talked about, right? So it's, it's really, nice to have that interactive conversation be able to have those juices flowing that we can bring back and solutionize um you know not just within red hat but working with our partner ecosystem as well yeah jamie yeah i, I think really and this is just sort of riffing on the actual name of it you know and this has been used in a tagline before commons common um you have so many different um organizations, entities, and people working uh, with these different technologies, and they seem different uses, different um, locations, geographic, et cetera, but ultimately there is a lot in common, and being able to network with people to find those places of commonality, both from a technical perspective, from a organizational perspective, from, a, from an interpersonal perspective, I think really makes everybody stronger in all of those areas in the technical, organizational, and personal. So, yeah, no, that was great. Like I, I agree with all of you. Like it's for me, it's even like hard to describe because it's like networking, connecting, learning, sharing. It's like every time I go, I just got you know I come up 
really inspired about something I heard that I even know, uh, the opportunity to connect, uh, learning more about the, the six. I'm very excited about uh, the roundtable discussions. I think it will provide that space because sometimes, I don't know if it happens to you, but when I go to events, sometimes I love the sessions, but also I, I love the opportunity to just talk to people. And having that space, I think it will be very unique. Um, so to really, there is just so many things that you can do in one day, right? From the sessions, to learn, to connect, to collaborate, to contribute. So I'm really looking forward to OpenShift's Common Satellite City. Please join us. Uh, and thank you all for joining today. You have been amazing. I can't wait to see you. Yeah, in just, I don't know, a month, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you.